you're going to want to watch this review because there is another sub $1,000 folding electric bike that I think is going to shake up the market in this comprehensive review of the Ride One Up Portola. I'm going to dive deep into all the components, tell you everything you need to know. Then we'll get into some first person riding footage. Feel the motor power there, over a thousand watts. And finally, some third person riding footage so you can see how I fit on this electric bike. But more importantly, I'll tell you the pros and cons. But first, let's take a closer look. I think this electric bike might become Ride One Up's most popular model to date, partly due to the price, which we'll get to in a second. But Ride One Up is a well known brand. This bike has a 750 watt motor, hydraulic disc brakes, and a couple other things that we don't often see at this price point. Now, the bike starts at $995 for the 10.4 amp hour battery. But for $100 more, $1095, you can upgrade to the 13.4 amp hour battery. And Ride One Up is running a special promotion for the launch of this electric bike. You can get an additional $100 off if you happen to be one of the first 100 purchasers. And if you do decide to purchase this electric bike, help support content like this for free by using our link down in the description. Thank you so much for your support. I have reviewed every single Ride One Up electric bike. You can check out all of our reviews if this one isn't for you, but I think this bike is going to appeal to a lot of people. It comes in three different colors, onyx black, sea turquoise, and what you see here is the indigo matte. The weight is 61 pounds and has a weight capacity of 300 pounds. And what I really like about this electric bike, not only do you have the step through, but it's also a smaller framed electric bike, so it's more approachable to newer riders. Let's actually take some measurements. First, the step over height is just 15 inches, and look how low the seat goes, just under 29 inches. And even for riders six feet tall, I can still get full leg extension, though the seat is in its highest position. Moving on to the components, we have unbranded hydraulic disc brakes paired with 180 millimeter rotors, a quick release front wheel, Chow Yang 20 by three inch wide tires with some tread on them for some light off-roading. Nice metal fenders front and good coverage in the rear. There's a basic suspension front fork complete with lockout. This is what you can expect out of the front suspension. There's an integrated 40 Lux front headlight and a rear light that's brake actuated. Ride One Up's front badge, really nice cable wrapping that disappears into the frame. And something new from Ride One Up, we have two sets of mounting points for a front basket. Folding handlebars up front, push and then pull the lever to fold down. The handlebars do not have any height adjustability. In the cockpit are nice ergonomic locking rubber grips, matching unbranded brake levers, complete with motor cutoffs a left-hand thumb throttle, and very unexpected at this price point, an eight-speed Shimano trigger shifter. And finally, Ride One Up's minimalistic left-hand monochrome display, battery bars in the top left-hand corner, pedal assist in the top right, zero all the way up to five, miles per hour front and center, wattage in the bottom. Hitting the power button will give you additional information odometer, trip, time, max speed, average speed, and back to your current speed. You'll wanna pay attention to this next bit because there are some cool advanced settings in this more basic looking display. Holding the power button and the pedal assist down button will allow you to change the classification of this electric bike. Class one, class two, and class three. And of course, we're going to put the full power of this motor to the test in class three mode in our upcoming first person riding footage. A couple other settings you might wanna look at, hold the pedal assist up and down button at the same time. Hit the power button. Might wanna make sure your brightness is turned all the way up. Hold the pedal assist up and down button at the same time. Once you're in here, hold the pedal assist down button that will get out of these settings and you can cycle through until you get to SCA2. And here's where you can change the power output of every pedal assist level. We're gonna leave it at zero to five. We can see in pedal assist level one, we get 20%, 240, 360, 480, 
and pedal assist level five is maxed out the full power of the motor. The battery can be charged while in the bike by lifting up this rubber cover, or you can remove the battery very easy because it's top loaded. Turn the key to the right, then there's a lever on the top of the battery. Just move that, battery comes out. Again, 10.4 amp hours on the 995 model, or for 1095, 13.4 amp hours. And yes, it fits perfectly in our flame resistant and waterproof bag for transportation and storage. Simply roll it up and it clips into place. To put the battery back in, locate the terminals. That end goes in first. Push into place. Make sure you turn the keys to lock. We have folding pedals. Push in, turn up to fold. The controller is tucked nicely behind the seat tube. There's also bottle cage bosses. This is the sidewinder you can pick up at shop.ebikeescape.com. Perfect for large water bottles. We have a basic saddle, rear mounted kickstand, and the rear rack welded right into the frame can hold a impressive 125 pounds. It also has pannier hangers. Also great for optional accessories like our dairyman. You can also add the pet cover as well as some bungee straps, maybe even our tote bag. This is the two amp charger that comes with the bike and it also comes with a nice set of tools. You also get an owner's manual, assembly instructions, even some maintenance grease. And Ride One Up even has us Wisconsinites covered with a beanie. And if you don't want to buy our basket, Ride One Up sells one that's compatible with their Connect Plus system. This also fits the Thule Yup Maxi if you have younger children. There's even mounts for pegs on each side. And there's a strap for when the bike is folded, which we'll do in a second. This is the 750 watt sustained motor. Curious how that performs up our hill climb test. 11 to 32 teeth in the rear and a 48 tooth single sided front chain ring. You get a chain stay protector, a Ride One Up branded. And finally, the Shimano Altus rear derailleur. Remember eight speeds instead of the typical seven we see. All right, let's fold it. Start with the pedals, then the handlebars. There's also a button on the other side. Don't forget that. The handlebars will fold down. And then the main lever latch, push and then pull. Check this out. Ride One Up has done their best to make sure no cables get pinched when you're folding this electric bike with this protective cover. We'll finish folding this, bring the front around, leave it on its stand. And one last step, we can unsnap this strap. And now when I lift the bike, it's not going to fall apart like some other folding electric bikes. And of course you have the stand as well. But that's just the components on the Ride One Up Portola. Let's get into some first person riding footage and see how this bike performs. All right, what does $1,000 get you? Let's find out. I really like the step through, super easy to hop on. A few things to talk about, even in pedal assist level zero, you still have access to the throttle, unless of course you have it set to a class one electric bike. I love that Ride One Up did that, just super easy to change from class one to two to three, which is what we're in now, because I wanna show you the full capability of this budget priced electric bike. First test will be throttle only, It'll get us up to 20 miles per hour. And I will also try to call out the wattage from the display. That's always handy to know. Here we go, three, two, one, throttle only. Nice and gentle. Eight miles an hour, 12, 15, 17, 18, 19. And the display on the bike is reading 20 miles per hour. GPS just reading slightly lower than that. So certainly capable on throttle alone. And I was using about 470 watts or so when it was holding me at the 20 mile per hour mark. Now let's go into the various pedal assist levels, but I am going to shift all the way down into first gear. Now keep in mind, I have this set to the stock settings and you can customize this, which is also a really cool feature of this electric bike. All right, pedal assist level one, and I'm in first gear. We'll see how this feels. Again, this is a cadence sensor electric bike. So as soon as I start pedaling, it's going to give me the power from the motor. It's not measuring how hard I'm pedaling like a torque sensor would. Pedal assist level one using just 30 watts. I could already shift up into second or third gear though. 
Going about 10 miles an hour, third gear. Let's go up to fourth gear. Cruising at 11 miles an hour. Now I will say at six feet tall, I'm probably maxing out the height on this electric bike. So if you are taller than me, just pay special attention to how I fit on this electric bike when you're watching the third person riding footage. All right, pedal assist level two. Getting a little bit more power there, 84 watts. And I could shift up to fifth gear here. Going at 14, 15 miles an hour. Now like ride one up tends to do, this is a current based system, which means the motor is just going to give me whatever power they have set consistently. It's not gonna cut off at a speed. As you can see, I'm creeping up to 15 miles an hour. I would maybe even shift up to six gear here going about 15 or 16 miles an hour, oh, just over 120 watts. All right, pedal assist levels three. I did have this bike fully charged. All right, we are getting close to the class two designation, 19 miles an hour. I'm gonna shift up to seventh gear. Display is reading 20, using about 300 watts. We'll turn this corner, 21 miles an hour. All right, pedal assist level four. Using about four, just over 400 watts. Getting back up to speed here. All right, looks like it's gonna hold us at about 21 miles an hour. Let's go ahead and go into pedal assist level five, see what this bike can do. Feel the motor power there. Over a thousand watts. Wow, okay. I gotta shift up to eighth gear. Wow, 27 miles an hour. We gotta do that top speed test again. All right, here we go, pedal assist level five. And yes, advertised as a 750 watt sustained motor, but clearly pedals this level five in class three mode, over a thousand watts. There's 25 miles an hour, 26. Got some pretty strong winds today. And I am still able to provide pedal power. A little faster cadence though. There's 27 miles an hour. And it looks like that's going to be the max speed, 27 miles an hour. Now, I could work a little harder if I wanted to, or I could just slowly spin my legs if I wanted to. All right, let's do a brake test at this speed limit sign. Give these hydraulic disc brakes a test. Here we go. And there we go, not bad at all. These brakes feel very capable, very similar to a Zoom hydraulic disc brakes, I would say. No problem getting me to a stop. That's how this bike performs on flat ground though. Let's see what it does up our large hill climb test. Here we go, hill climb test. This is the hill that I test out all the electric bikes that I review on the channel. So you can compare and contrast and we'll see what this bike can do. We'll put a picture on the screen of this hill because the GoPro makes it look so much smaller than it is. We'll also put the specs up there as well. Now ride feel wise, this bike feels very similar to a lot of the other folding electric bikes that I've reviewed, not surprising, giving these handlebars are pretty standard. Put you in a more upright riding position. These ones are a little bit more narrow compared to a standard bike. And some of the other options, of course, by ride one up. All right. 13 miles an hour, 12 for a second. Let's 
So, so far, very impressive. And actually, on throttle alone right now, I'm seeing over 1,000 watts, 1,049 watts of peak power. And so it looks like the minimum speed is going to be 12 miles an hour, which is super impressive when you think about just how affordable this electric bike is. Though, of course, it is an electric bike after all. So I'm going to go back down the hill and do it again while pedaling. All right, here we go. I'm going to go into pedal assist level one, shift all the way down. We'll see gearing wise how the bike can climb the hill. And I must say, very impressed to have this Shimano shifter on this electric bike. Very easy to use. All right, not surprisingly though, pedal assist level one, just giving me 50 watts and first gear, and this would be a significant workout. Let's go ahead and go into a higher pedal assist level. Pedal assist level two, using just over 100 watts and still working plenty hard. Let's go ahead and go into pedal assist level three, get to some higher pedal assist levels that most people are going to want to use on hills. There we go, finally feeling some relief. 300 watts, just over 300 watts. First gear, I could do this, but still going to take some, some leg power for sure. I imagine most people, Pedal assist level four, using just under 500 watts. Much easier, first gear. Could maybe shift up into second gear. But of course, where this bike really shines, pedal assist level five. And there we go. My legs start spinning immediately as I feel that thousand watts of power. Shift up to fifth gear here more nice and easy cadence cruising at 15 miles an hour so human power certainly going to help on the hills but undoubtedly a powerful motor especially given the price all right with that let's get into some third person riding footage and i'll give you my concluding thoughts on the Ride One Up Portola. Yet again, we have a company testing the limits of what's possible in a $1,000 electric bike, and it's from a company that has been in the value-priced e-bike game since 2018. Ride One Up has had a massive year. They've launched the Taurus, Rev1, Rift, Prodigy V2, and now the Portola. It's a wide lineup with something for everyone, and you can check out the full lineup and updated pricing in the description, and also support us here at eBike Escape. It's possible the Portola is the e-bike that opens up the brand to the masses for a couple of reasons. The Portola fills a few gaps previously in the lineup. One, it fits riders all the way down to 4'10", but not only that, due to the smaller tires and overall frame design, it's not an intimidating e-bike. It looks and rides like an e-bike that is easy to handle. At around 60 pounds, it's not lightweight, but is lighter weight than many other larger e-bikes that we feature on the channel. And secondly, that magic number. A $1,000 price point means more people are going to be able to afford a Ride One Up e-bike. It's a great first e-bike. Notice I didn't say entry level since it's not an e-bike that's going to leave you wishing you spent more. At least I don't think so. It's in Ride One Up's DNA to spec their e-bikes just a little bit better than the competition, and that's exactly what you get with the Portola. Let's dive into the features. A plenty powerful 750 watt motor with either a 48 volt 10.4 amp hour battery or 13.4 amp hour battery for $100 more. I'd say the upgrade is money well spent if it's in the budget. Ride One Up's range estimate between 25 and 40 miles feels pretty spot on. And I give Ride One Up credit for being transparent on the cells, in this case not LG or Samsung, but UE cells which undoubtedly allow them to hit that price point. The hydraulic disc brakes, which you don't often see hydraulic disc brakes at this price point period, felt really nice and responsive, not spongy like some others can be out of the box. For the drivetrain, a slight step up with an Altus derailleur, even matched with eight speeds and an Altus trigger shifter. And the 11 to 32 tooth cassette, which was nice to see. The suspension fork, 
not surprisingly is basic, but still increases the terrain the bike can handle, aided by what I like to call happy medium sized 20 by 3 inch tires. Accessory wise you get fenders front and rear, a huge capacity rear rack compatible with accessories to make it your own, and decent front and rear lights. And of course the bike folds, which is great for portability. I expect this to be a hit with the RV crowd. As a side note, even if you never plan to use the folding feature, don't cross this bike off the list. There are plenty of people who own a folding e-bike that never use this feature. It's just an added benefit if you need it. The battery is integrated for a clean look, easy to remove due to it being top load, and the controller, while external, sits flush with the frame and blends in. And I'm glad to see the attention to detail like the strap to hold the bike together when folded and the extra protection around the cables at the pivot point to help prevent any pinching of cables. Looking at this e-bike, there's nothing that screams $1,000 e-bike. Ride One Up asked me for candid feedback and my one comment was I wish it arrived fully assembled. You'll need to install the stem and instructions are included. On the flip side, this helped cut down on the bike box size and shipping costs, which helped Ride One Up achieve a crazy good price. Free shipping is included. So yeah, trade-offs. And I also needed to give the Ride One Up team props for the easiest way I've seen to change between the three classifications of e-bikes, just so user-friendly, and even more, you can customize the power in each pedal assist level. I think Ride One Up has a winner on its hands with the Portola, and if you decide this is your next e-bike, we'd appreciate you supporting us for free by using our link down in the description. Thank you so much for your support. It's worth reiterating that Ride One Up is a direct-to-consumer brand, hence the awesome prices on all of their e-bikes. Recently, they've ramped up customer support, and maybe we can get current Ride One Up owners to share their experience in the comment section below. I cannot wait to hear what everyone thinks of the Portola. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.